Welcome to Universal Man. My name is Mark Weppet, and I'm here to help you stop screwing around and play a bigger game with your life so that you can win where it matters and earn your own respect. And today I'm back with the third episode of the Man of Action series. And in this episode, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be teaching you how to fall in love with discipline. You see, I think most of us have huge internal blocks that keep us ha hating discipline and making it seem way more difficult than it needs to be. And so what I'm going to be teaching you how to do is remove that block and fall in love with doing the things that are really good for you. And you, if you follow what I'm talking about here, then you'll get to the point where you'll be able to do things that you never even thought were possible for you. And I'm not exaggerating here. This is, this is big stuff. So stay tuned and learn how to do it. Most guys fail to build good habits because they're stuck in bad thought patterns. Until you recondition your brain to think new thoughts in the moments that matter, you'll keep ending up in the same old places over and over again. This is why I created the Metascript Method. It's a free guide that will teach you three simple yet insanely powerful journaling techniques that, when practiced regularly, will reprogram your brain for near automatic success. I've read hundreds of client journals in my years as a professional coach, and I've identified exactly what you need to put down on the page if you want to create positive life changes that truly stick. And no, just endlessly writing about your feelings doesn't work. So if you want to learn my secret weapons of self-development, then click the link below and grab your free copy of the Metascript Method now. All right, before I get into this, I just want to take a second to thank you guys for all the support you've shown me with this Man of Action series. It took me six years to get to 20,000 subs on YouTube, and now, only in the span of a few weeks, I've literally doubled my subscriber count. So, I mean, I think clearly I'm hitting on something that's pretty cool here. And uh, I want to thank all the new guys who are here. I uh, hope you get a ton out of your time with us. Um, but I also want to thank all you guys who've been following me for a while uh, for the ongoing support. So, all right, let's get into this. So here's what I see. I think the biggest issue people have when it comes to developing discipline is that they have a framing problem, meaning the way that they view the situation, the way they frame the problem of discipline, I think is seriously blocking most people from ever developing it. And framing problems are really important to understand. So let me give you a quick example so you know what I'm talking about. Imagine that you order a piano, a big, beautiful, grand piano, okay? And it shows up outside of your house, and you realize, oh, crap, this thing's too big. I can't fit it in my front door, okay? Now, a bad way to frame that problem would be to say, how can I get a bigger hole to fit the piano into? You know, it's like, that's a costly way to go about framing the problem because then it's like, all right, well, how can I put a big hole in my wall and get this thing inside, okay? What's the better way to frame the problem? It would be, well, how can I get a smaller piano, right? Maybe you got to take the legs off the piano or order a smaller version or, you know, disassemble it and reassemble it or something like that, right? That would be the better way to frame the problem. But, you know, I think when it comes to discipline, that's kind of what people are doing is they're framing it poorly and they're setting themselves up for the solutions that they come up with to be less than satisfactory. So how exactly do we set up a poor frame for discipline? Well, all right, first let's talk about what exactly is discipline real quick. It's like, well, when it comes to the decision to make a good decision or a bad decision, the good decision is one that kind of is uncomfortable. It doesn't feel good, right? So if you're trying to really improve your diet, you know, that point of decision where are you gonna eat pizza and ice cream or are you gonna have a salad, it kind of hurts. It kind of hurts to choose the salad. and that's normal, right? That's what discipline is. Otherwise, we we wouldn't have a word for discipline. We just have fun and doing good stuff, right? But, you know, we have these kinds of actions we know are good and that they're painful to do, right? And from this baseline, you know, obvious sort of thing, people form the frame. And the frame would be, how can I get myself to do something that I don't want to do? I think that's the bad way to frame discipline. It's like, how can I get myself to do something I don't want to do? And when you go at discipline from this perspective, no matter what you do, it's going to end up feeling like you're trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. And that's what most of us experience with discipline. It just feels like this, this grind, this thing that we need to force ourselves through. And it doesn't mean that this is impossible, right? You can do this, right? You can increase your willpower. You can learn how to apply some more brute force. You can engage with, you know, engineering the challenge, like by removing choices and stuff. Like, you know, if you're trying to eat healthy, it's like, don't keep any sweets in your house. But that doesn't really make the discipline easier so much as it removes the need for discipline. And 
again, this stuff isn't bad and you can have some success like this. I've had plenty of success by learning how to grind through discipline and that sort of thing, but it's, it's wearing, it's hard. And probably what's worst of all is that it reinforces this idea that you don't want to do the thing. And that's a problem because what you're doing is you're just setting yourself up to live a rather uncomfortable life or a life where it's dependent upon you to be uncomfortable, to be successful. And yeah, to some extent, we all got to get used to discomfort. But I think this framing in general is just a bad way to go about it. It's like, yeah, you can get the, ho- the, the piano in the house by knocking a bigger hole in the wall. And if you're really committed and bought in, you can make that happen. But how committed and bought in are most of us? You know, most of us aren't putting a hole in the wall level committed. And we probably shouldn't be, depending upon what we're aiming for, you know? So what's the better way to frame the problem of discipline? Well, instead of asking yourself, how can I get myself to do something I don't want to do? What if instead you framed it as, how can I get myself to fall in love with this act of discipline? See? They'll both end up in the same place where you're doing the action, right? But one, you know, sets you up for a big, long grind of smashing a square peg into a round hole. The other takes you down a path of passion, of learning how to love something that is actually good for you. And when I'm talking about this, learning how to love the discipline, I'm not just le- talking about learning how to love the result, okay? That's, that's kind of like, you know the first frame perspective. It's like, yeah, I'll do it because I know I want the thing, right? No, I'm talking about learning how to love the process itself, all right? So it's like if you want to be a writer, it's instead of just learning how to love having a finished book, it's learning how to love the process of writing, okay? If you want to be a top-tier athlete, it's not just learning how to love being at the, you know, top of the podium or whatever. It's learning how to love practice, learning how to love the prehab, the rehab, the, you know, the taking the ice baths to help your muscles recover, like all that kind of stuff. It's learning how to really embrace and relish the process. So how do you do this? Well, this is what I call the brain bridging technique. The idea is pretty simple. It's like, all right, you have your current perspective where this act of discipline kind of seems like it sucks a little bit. Um, But what you want to do is you want to build a bridge to a new way of looking at things. You want to get inside the brain of someone who loves living the way that you're trying to live, who's, who's obsessed with it. They're just hooked into it. They, they can't get enough of it. So back when I was in college, I was super disorganized. I, you know, didn't have a calendar. I couldn't keep a to-do list. I was always late for things, always forgetting about assignments and stuff. I, I missed an exam one time because I just didn't know I had it because I was so disorganized. And uh, there was this girl I knew. I, w- I was an RA. I was a terrible RA. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's a resident assistant. So I like lived in the dorm and was kind of like responsible for people on the floor. And I was a pretty bad RA. But there was another RA and she was super on top of things. She was so organized. It was insane. We could always rely on her to know like when something was. And if you gave her an assignment, it absolutely got done by the time she said it got done. And just like insanely productive, organized, that sort of thing. And I, I asked her one time, I was like, how do you do it? And, you know, it was pretty obvious, you know, pretty basic stuff. You know, she kept a calendar, she kept notes and stuff like that. But the thing that really struck me was that she loved being organized. She was obsessed with it in a lot of ways. It was almost like a hobby of hers. And I realized that that was the biggest difference. It's like it wasn't that she was doing anything extraordinary. It's just that she had an extraordinary uh, attachment and, and desire and enjoyment of the process. And once you can get that... The actual process itself is, you know, it's kind of trivial. So that's really the goal here is how can we get our head, our thoughts, our actions to look like someone who loves doing the disciplines that we're aiming for? And doing this is a bit of a creative exercise because you have to, like, imagine. You have to imagine, well, how would they think about this versus how am I thinking about it? So it's like, you know, going back to eating healthy because that's a, you know, a pretty simple example. It's like, all right, the person who is unhealthy what do they focus on? Well, they're focusing primarily on the mouthfeel, the sensation, the taste, all right? And that's what they optimize their activity around. They're trying to choose the food that gives them the biggest level of sensation in their mouth, right? Okay, well, what about the healthy person? What does they do? What, what about particularly the healthy person who loves eating healthy, who actually prefers it? What are they focusing on? Well, maybe they're focusing on, well, how fresh does the food 
taste? You know, how much energy does it provide me with? You know, how much nutrition is there? It's like, you know, I, I've had glimpses of this. I'm not the, the healthiest eater in the world, but, you know, I'm improving it in a lot of ways, kind of just accidentally by practicing this sort of stuff. Is that like, you know, you go through the grocery store with this person's mindset, with a person who loves eating healthier, you you become like a, a heat seeking missile for the stuff that you think is going to provide the greatest level of nutrition that's going to provide you the greatest level of power. And when you go in with that mindset, it's a lot easier. It's a lot easier than if you're going in there being like, all right, what's the the most intense sugar coma that I could induce right now? Right. <laughs> If you want to be like a, a YouTuber or a content creator, okay, what do you have to fall in love with then? Well, you would have to learn how to fall in love with making up content, right? Learning how to love video editing, learning how to sit there and grind out ideas and think about them and experiment and explore and then share it with other people. And you have to even learn how to love negative feedback to some extent because otherwise it can absolutely destroy you. And so the more that you can learn how to love the, the hard parts – of dealing with whatever discipline you're taking on, the easier it is going to be for you to do that thing, right? I'll do one more example, all right? And this is one I've kind of done a lot, but, you know, it's worth recapping. So say you're a porn addict, all right? This is the thing I've made my niche in, all right? What does the porn addict love? Well, they love to just get their hyper-stimulated orgasm. They love to get their, you know, virtual excitement and then get on. Uh, but what else do they, what do they hate? Well, they hate feeling their own sexual desire. As soon as they feel it, they need to kind of chase it away. They need to try and trans, like, transform it into some sort of act of virtual sexual excitement, okay? The person who loves sexual self-mastery, who loves to be free from that kind of stuff, what do they, what are they plugged into? What do they care about? Well, they learn how to love the feeling of their sexual charge. They learn how, learn how to hold it and see it as a source of power, to see it as uh, a place where they can extract a vibrant, driven energy from. And if you want to understand more about that, then check out my uh, sexual self-mastery series, the videos I've done on sexual transmutation, or even my Reforged Man course. But basically, if you can learn how to think like the person who loves it, then that's, that's, that solves this framing issue. Now, you might be thinking, mm, okay, Mark, I'm with you. That would be great. I can see how that would work to some extent, but it can't be that easy, right? And you'd be kind of right, because... Uh, there is kind of a sticking point here, and the sticking point would be that you can't just snap your fingers and change your emotional conditioning. No matter how much time you spend visualizing and imagining yourself being the person who loves living in the way that you want to live, um, your old conditioning is going to kick in at certain points, and you're going to view that act of discipline as a burden, you're going to see, you're going to get, you're going to fall back into that square peg round hole sort of thing where it feels like, oh, this grind, this push, this, you know, difficult sort of thing where you're, you're missing out on the stuff that you really want. Right. And we got to learn how to respond to that. That's kind of the, the key here. And I would say that there are two big components to making this transition. All right. One is self-talk. All right. You got to learn how to talk to yourself more than just listen to yourself, because if you're just listening to yourself, you're just feeling your feelings and you're letting them set the narrative in your head. Well, then you're going to just fall back into that same old frame where this feels like it sucks. OK. And so if you're talking to yourself, though, you can control that narrative. You got to be telling yourself, oh, no, I love this stuff. Like if you're trying to become you know, an elite level athlete, well, then you, you got to get up early in the morning, you got to do your first workout of the day. Well, it's like, I love this. Even as your body's yelling at you saying, I hate this, you say, no, we love it. This is what we love. This is the stuff we're doing. This is us uh, chasing out the weakness and bringing in the power. This is us be like becoming the person we want to be. And you l basically change your narrative around the sensation. OK, it's like if you're in the process of overcoming uh, craving to, to smoke, say you're trying to quit smoking. All right. Well, yeah, you're still going to feel cravings no matter what your mindset's like. You're going to feel this craving like, ah, I really wish I could have a cigarette right now. You're going to say, no, no, we don't wish we could have a cigarette right now. What this feeling right now, this is us rewiring our brain. I love this feeling. This is the feeling of me getting set free. This is the feeling of the bars of my prison being sawn open or down or whatever. I don't know. What do you do with bars of prison? You bend them, break them. That's what you're feeling. And you tell yourself this, you feed yourself these thoughts in these moments.
And what you have to understand is that you can kind of break human experience into three different categories. We've got thoughts, we've got emotions, and we've got actions. Thoughts, emotions, actions. All right, one, two, three. And if we can get two of those things pointing in one direction, the third one will almost always follow. So what we're trying to control here is we're trying to control the action and we're trying to control the thought. So if you can get yourself to think this way, think like the person who loves it, and then get yourself to start doing it, as you repeat this, eventually the emotion's gonna catch up and you're actually gonna start loving it as well, as long as the mindset is there and you're doing the actual reps. So this self-talk and then using this self-talk to talk to yourself so that you can do the action, okay, that's one big piece of it. The other piece is kind of unusual in a way. It's like learning how to cultivate a healthy indifference. So indifference is just as powerful as love or hate. And in some ways it's more powerful because what you become indifferent to, that basically says, I can free my energy up from that. I can let that thing go. It doesn't matter. And you have to learn how to become indifferent to whatever the cost is that the, the discipline asks of you. So I mentioned this in some of the previous episodes here, but I was really hooked on competitive video gaming for a long time. And whenever I would think about quitting or whatever, because I knew it was wasting so much of my time, so much of my energy, and holding me back on a number of different levels, like, I would always think about it, I imagine myself living that life, but then there was this part that would come up like, oh, well, you know, this is one of your main ways that you play with, you know, or connect with one of your friends, and, you know, the way you connect with your brother, and like, you know, if you get rid of this thing, well, you're just going to lose that, right? And so what I had to do is I had to figure out, all right, how could the... How could the person that loves living without, you know, video games, how does he become indifferent to that cost? Well, I had to think about it. It's like, okay, well, I could still hang out with my brother. I can still hang out with that friend. And in fact, if I'm not gaming, I could actually focus on making that interaction even better. I could make it more personal. I could make it more meaningful because a lot of times, like, you know, I've, I've had some good, some really great times playing video games with friends, but I've had much better ones doing other stuff, you know, actually talking to them, like going out and doing stuff together and realizing that, all right, that's how I make it that cost negligible is by I commit to having real experiences with that person, right? And so that's what you got to figure out how to do is how can I become indifferent to the cost here? So if you're trying to become indifferent to porn uh, and, you know, lustful behavior in general, it's like that shit doesn't matter doesn't matter at all. Those girls, they don't know anything about me. This doesn't add anything to my life. If I miss out on that, I literally, literally am missing nothing of value. And this is why it's important to know what's actually useful to you and what's not. And as long as you're focusing on cutting out low value activities and bringing in higher value ones, then you can always engage in this process. You can always learn how to cultivate an indifference to it because if you're being honest with yourself, it really doesn't matter. If you're cutting out stuff that's not useful to you, it's not furthering the goals that you really care about, well, then it doesn't matter, right? And you gotta tell yourself this with this self-talk. You gotta be feeding yourself these thoughts and thinking like the person who loves that process, who loves the reward and all that sort of thing. And this is the brain bridge. This is the brain bridge that we have to construct and begin crossing. And as we cross it, Everything is going to start catching up. The thoughts, the emotions, the feelings, the whole thing is going to get there until eventually you are legitimately someone who loves doing these things. And it doesn't mean that it's always going to be comfortable, all right? Like, I love my work. I love doing this kind of stuff. Does that mean it's easy? No. <laughs> and a lot of times it's really difficult. Like this episode itself, I filmed the whole thing. Then I realized that I didn't actually start the, the audio recording. And... Was that comfortable? No. <laughs> but I learned how to embrace it. I said, you know what? I laughed about it. I laughed about it and I said, you know what? This is what happens. This makes it funny. And look, now I'm turning it into an anecdote that is for good because I'm leaning into it and I'm saying, you know what? I'm going to love this experience even if it doesn't feel good, right? And you have this kind of power. And what's really cool is that as you start practicing this, this approach to uh, changing your mindset, is that you can begin doing the mental work before you're even ready to start actually taking action. Like, you know, me quitting video games, that was something I didn't think I was actually ever going to do. Um, I thought that, you know, I was just going to keep playing and whatever. So I, me engaging in these thoughts at first, it was just an experiment. It was just, you know, let's, let's do a, let's do a brain experiment. Let's do a thought experiment. And the thing was, it was such a potent 
reaction. I was like, oh, why don't I just do it then? <laughs> but the thing is, most of us, we don't build that bridge. We don't build that perspective. And so it's a very difficult to step into it. So if you focus on building the perspective first, then it can make the, the taking action and actually doing the discipline that much easier. And it's okay to do it like that. In fact, in many ways, you should. So if, there's, if you're not ready yet, you're feeling like, oh, everything is too hard right now. Just start thinking. Start imagining what it would be like to be someone who loved living that way, right? What would it be like to be someone who was indifferent to the crap that you're wasting your time on now? Create that image. Create that person. And then in the moment, start trying to step into that. Start trying to put that brain in your, brain, in your head and move from there. And you'll surprise yourself with how quickly this can make a significant difference. Now, if you really wanna take this kind of process to the next level, well, then you can be a bit more structured about this reprogramming. And this is where you wanna check out the Metascript method that I've been advertising. I've released that, and it's a guide that teaches you how to apply these concepts in a journal. And you can, it's, it makes it much faster because when you apply a ritualized sort of self-reflective action, you know, where you're actually writing out these thoughts and, you know, throwing away the bad ones and that sort of thing, uh, it just makes the process go faster because it gives your brain more to sink its teeth into rather than just talking in your head. So if you really want to learn how to do this at the, at the fastest rate possible, then make sure that you click the link below and you sign up and you get your free copy of the Metascript method. I've gotten a lot of great feedback from it so far, so I think you'll probably dig it. So that's pretty much it for this episode. I hope you've gotten a lot out of it. And I just want to tell you that like, once you see the power of this, once you see this start working for you, you'll come to understand that really the sky is the limit here. Like our brains are incredible. Our level of neuroplasticity is unbelievable. And as long as you're going at things in a systematic sort of way, kind of like how I was talking in the, the last episode, then you can keep changing. You can keep changing your brain, discarding the crap and bringing in the good stuff and loving it and learning how to thrive and be on top of your life. So you know, give it a shot. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you're trying to do down below. Let me know what discipline you're trying to fall in love with. And let me know what perspectives you're going to take. I would love to hear it. And I'm sure, you know, you guys would like to hear from each other and get feedback and that sort of thing. So put the comment below and, uh, you know, let me know what you think. But that's pretty much it. Play big. I'll see you in the next one.